So we're going to try today to have a look at the um, Tom Bin TriStar. This is one of the best all around business travel bags I think I've ever had. And I've tried a few. Um, this one has some great features that I'm going to show to you and why it specifically works for uh, what I class business travel, but also some, some personal travel. Um, so I hope you enjoy the video. Uh, there's lots of reviews out there, some fantastic reviews on the features, the material, um, the layout of the bag. And I really wanted to share what specifically I thought worked well for this in a business travel setting. It's a high quality bag. It's one that you're going to invest in. And I use that word carefully. It's, it's a relatively expensive bag and therefore one that you want to get right, one that you want to use for many years to come. Um, so this is a business travel focused uh, review. Um, they used to call it One Bag to Rule the Skies, if I remember correctly. It's not on their website anymore as a phrase, but I thought it was perfect because it, it really encapsulated exactly the best way you could use this bag, especially if you're going to be traveling by air. It's well sized for air travel at 480 millimeters by 330 millimeters by 205 millimeters. That's 18.9 inches by 13 inches by 8.1 inch. So to the best of my knowledge, this fits uh, almost every carry-on uh, size limit that I've ever encountered. Um, weight is a different story, of course, because every uh, airline has a slightly different weight allowance. The bag in ballistic nylon is about one and a half kilograms uh, bare. Um, there is a lighter Halcyon version, but the uh, Tom Bin Ballistic is, is my preference and it's really nicely sized at 33 uh, litres which is great for two to four days uh, travel anything up to I guess a week or maybe two weeks depending on how you pack. So looking at the bag I mean I, I really need to try and highlight this to you if I can. The natural light in here isn't fantastic today but this is the steel uh, ballistic nylon which is uh, one of my favorite and the steel in this case is paired with this I don't know if you can see this well this island uh, halcyon interior for me the the uh, steel island um, combination is fantastic it's just so so nice um, it fits that kind of business travel corporate maybe slightly conservative look, but also has that really fun pop of color on the inside, as, as you can see. Um, one thing I did want to highlight really quickly is the difference. And here I have a, an Aeronaut 45. Just to compare the fact that the piping on the black ballistic just matches in. It doesn't actually have any kind of definition or contrast to it. But as you can see with the with the TriStar in steel, it has the black piping, which really adds a really nice contrast, as well as, of course, the zips there. So as I've said, the ballistic nylon, it is a um, harder wearing, heavier duty and, and heavier material um, than the equivalent Halcyon. Um, I also have a, a bag here, this is the uh, Daylight briefcase, in the lighter Halcyon, which is nice, um, but for me in the bigger bags, I'm really looking for something that's hard wearing, especially if it's uh, a bag I'm investing in for a number of years with a lot of miles traveling. One thing I will highlight is uh, the change of label. There used to be a triangular TriStar label, which frankly was fantastic. Um, that's gone nowadays in the newer styles in favor of their more standard um, rectangular label. I think that's a real shame, um, but I understand the consistency or branding they're looking for. Um, but the idea of TriStar three parts and a triangular label was really neat in the past. So I'm going to talk now about the, the layout of the bag, 
uh, how I typically use it um, for say a week's worth of, of business travel. Um, starting with the front, uh, I do use the uh, cubes, uh, the Tom Bin cubes. I have the, the medium here and also the, the small. I have the, this is a Northwest Sky Halcyon. This is a perfect size for my uh, size 9 um, trainers, dress shoes, uh, whatever. So I always tend to carry uh, a pair of shoes, even if it's just for the gym, in this pocket just here. Uh, it's nice, of course, to be able to do um, some exercise when you're traveling. The main um, section here, the medium, um, tends to have odds and ends, to be honest, um, whether it's some odds and ends for travel. Um, in here at the moment, I've just got some, some earplugs, uh, a sink locker, um, but that will steadily fill up with other things like um, toiletries, power pack for the laptop, um, kind of those slightly bulkier but non-clothes items. So this, to be honest, is kind of the catch-all pouch for all the odds and ends um, uh, when I travel. The middle section here uh, is the one that I usually carry uh, my laptop in. Um, depending on where I'm going and how it's going to work, you can just put uh, a cache with rails straight into the bag. Uh, the new style TriStar doesn't have the clips for the brain cell anymore, um, which to be honest I never used. Uh, so you can just put uh, your laptop and cache straight, straight in there. Um, I'm going to show you somewhere else in a little while where you can put the laptop if you really need the extra space. Um, just as a comparison, I have a really dirty old um, uh, brain cell here with the old attachment points. Um, you can just slide that straight in. Um, I don't feel you need the attachment points for this anyway and it can float from left to right uh, gives you a little bit of space down the side still. Um, so an option still, if you wanted to use it, is to use an old brain cell, which is now a retired design. But for the most part, um, the, the cache works just well for me. Instead of just using the cache or brain cell in the middle, you can also put perhaps a day bag or a small laptop bag straight in uh, to the TriStar. So here's the daylight briefcase again. Imagine you have your 13 inch laptop. Uh, that will slide again straight into the middle. You could try perhaps a pilot, co-pilot, but they're thicker designs. I find that the thinner bags work a lot better in the middle here and again there's still space down the side for other pieces. Um, if you're really keen, um, I do have a matching, and this is fantastic as well, uh, matching Steel Island Cadet, um, which is for the bigger laptops. I only have a 13 inch laptop. Um, but actually, you'll find there's two, two straps here. You wouldn't need to take two straps with you, of course. You'll find that the Cadet itself fits quite nicely in there. So in place of needing the, the cache, you can put your Cadet straight in and it's still accessible. Um, the nice thing about the Cadet is it actually has a um, padded frame, which some of the other bags don't have. So you probably may not even need uh, a cache because of the padding in the cadet itself. Whilst we're talking about bags fitting in to the TriStar, I'm going to deviate slightly uh, from the idea of business travel and share just a couple of other little tricks I've picked up over the years using other bags. Um, I'm a huge fan of the old 
uh, 11 inch ristretto this is an older one in uh, cordura um, which is fantastic for uh, 11 inch um, laptops or say iPads I have a 10 and a half inch iPad Pro which fits fantastically in here and depending on how you've got it filled it can actually fit into the medium folder here uh, into the medium section here it'll bulge a little bit but it does fit again you wouldn't need to take two straps because you just use the one off the main bag uh, for the second bag um, and one that I really like I think this one's fantastic the um, small cafe bag again here in blue uh, navy cordura is just one of the most flexible bags around um, so handy um, so this one's just got its Freudian slip in it not very heavily packed there at all and actually not as neatly perhaps but it will fit into the small section there so a little bit of a squeeze perhaps um, but if it's something that you're you've not got um, filled out to capacity you just want uh, maybe with it empty to store it in there with some odds and ends if it's ready then to pull out uh, maybe as an in-flight pouch or when you're traveling um, I don't tend to use that much on business travel that's more for personal travel um, but it's it's an option for you as well so as you've seen in other videos the front section also has this zip um, opportunity to, to make it into a, a wider front section so you've got three sections of relatively equal um, size I very rarely do that I tend to keep them uh, separated and um, for one reason it stops this front pouch bulging out if you can imagine this full it could actually bulge in the middle um, which one of the, the downsides of the TriStar is it does bulge in the middle depending on how you pack it uh, so I tend to keep this always locked it just stops the front of the bag from bulging as you can see the zips are actually really pretty smooth a, a little bit of uh, bite or um, friction to them nothing unreasonable um, I do often have uh, zip pulls cord pulls on the zips to stop them jangling um, and also to grab them easier on this bag because of the lockable zips which are here I actually prefer just to grab the zip, the metal zip uh, piece itself rather than a piece of string. Um, it's just a preference on this bag. I do use um, cord pulls on the other. So I'm going to show you the back section now, um, which is where all of the clothing that I usually take goes. Um, so here you can see we've got um, a, a number of options. Uh, I'm a, as I've said, a cube fan and a packing folder fan. These are three of the Eagle Creek options and a TriStar sized uh, pouch. The folders work really well. Um, the small one here is just, as you can see, probably just a little bit too small to maximize the use of the space. Um, but the these are the medium size, which I don't know if you can see. This is the Spectre one, and then this is the um, fabric. They're pretty much exactly the same. I think one is the Spectre, supposedly slightly smaller, but I find that they're very, very comparable. So I'll usually only take one of these on a trip um, but both both are options um, there's nothing in this one at the moment but 
if you can imagine it filled with a number of uh, shirts, uh, what I would tend to do is fill up the shirts, jumpers, trousers, um, perhaps underwear, etc., and place it straight in here. Um, another option, which depending on what I'm carrying, um, occasionally I'll carry a suit in the TriStar, uh, in which case I'll still use the um, the Spectre, uh, sorry, the Eagle Creek cube for the shirts. But then what I'll do is I'll put, I'll fold the suit jacket. Um, there's a number of videos on YouTube on how best to fold a, a suit or sports jacket. Fold it in here. I'll get my shirts. I'll put that on, and then I'll wrap the trousers around this as if it were a, a bundle wrap to wrap around it, and then use the cube just to hold everything together. And then again, just use the straps to, to lock it down. I have owned a packing cube backpack in the past, sized for the TriStar, and I would use it in the same way. I'd use the folders first, and then the um, backpack uh, cube around it to hold it all together. The, um, the reason I don't use the packing cube backpack anymore is I do like using the daylight backpack. Um, this one's a bit bright, but it's fantastic. This is the uh, burnt orange. Uh, in Cordura, I absolutely love this color. It's it's so nice. Um, maybe not quite for the work environment, but maybe for day trips or um, evenings out. Just something to, to throw some bits and pieces in. So occasionally, I'll just throw that in the back on top. It's so flat, as you can see. It's perfectly sized to fit in the back. Or as I mentioned earlier, Perhaps the daylight backpack, uh, sorry, daylight briefcase, one or the other. If I'm not using that in the center compartment, it can also fit in the back. Um, and then it would just zip up with everything already accessible inside. Again, depending on how you're going to use the bag, um, one feature which I've not used it much, but on occasion is the um, Freudian slip, which is sized for the TriStar um, and Western Flyer, I think. This is an older version with the, the old steel um, Halcyon Dyneema um, and this one is again well sized to fit straight into the middle compartment or even the back or front compartments uh, depending on how you've got them organized um, so this would traditionally or practically be used I suppose if you're not carrying a separate bag and this is the main uh, briefcase bag for the day as well as your overnight um, essentials. Um, what I really like about this style of bag, as you probably have noticed, it's hardly got anything in it and it still stands up. It doesn't fall over very easily. Um, it, it, it's got quite a good um, base to it. As you can see, very square. I do like the square design because it's very easy then. Uh, when you're traveling to put it down, it doesn't keep falling over. Um, and because it stands up, if you're using this as your main kind of bag during the day, um, and it's the same when the cadet's inside, you can just open it up and there's your mobile office just there. Put it down by your chair, wherever you're working, and you can dip straight in, laptops, iPads, whatever. And just to show that as a, an example there, this is my uh, 10 and a half inch iPad. You just slide it in the back there. 
Um, it's in there and you can have your charger down the side here perhaps. Um, or if this was a laptop, it could go straight into the, to the cache. It's just a really, really practical layout for doing work, in my opinion. So it's, it's usable during the day and during your travels as much as just a great bag for getting to a destination. And for me, that's the biggest single uh, advantage for using this one for business over, say, um, a rolling suitcase or an aeronaut, etc. Again, because this is a bag that's going to be working for me whilst I'm traveling as well as um, just getting to a destination. Um, another thing that I, I use is a clear uh, urethane, um, I think this is a medium organizer pouch, which again could go in the Freudian slip, or sometimes I'll just have this at the front under the um, medium cube, clip on. And that's just for all my receipts and odds and ends. Not usually travel documents, it's more for, for storage, um, uh, for reference later rather than something I need that's accessible. Um, when I travel, I tend to use the front pockets um, for the essentials. Um, I don't have a Tombin uh, RFID passport pouch. Um, I would never carry one around my neck. Um, I think it, it, it's just uncomfortable for me. A few years ago, I found this fantastic Bellroy um, passport wallet, which uh, contains passport, uh, small pen, you know, space for cards, etc. Um, and that just tends to live in either this this bottom pocket here, or occasionally. In the middle just depends what I've got. Um, I did hear originally this could be used for kind of airline tickets when they were that kind of rectangular shape. I think most people don't have that anymore but it is quite a deep pocket. Um, at the moment I've got a, I think these are called quick, quick clips. Um, I always carry one of these uh, in my bags. Um, you can use it for, for hanging the TriStar up. Um, if you were needing to hang it in a wardrobe or back of a toilet stall, etc. Um, it can also go on the end, of course, if you want to clip that to maybe something whilst you're traveling just for safety. Um, so I always carry one of these uh, with me, generally lives in there. Um, and there's, there's just some more odds and ends, maybe wallet, keys, there's another quick, quick clip, bandana just for any kind of emergency spills or, or needs. Um, I think in here as well, just got some odds and ends, eye mask, uh, one of these kind of rubber laundry lines. Um, so it does change time to time when I travel, which things goes in which pocket. Uh, generally though, it's shoes over here, odds and ends, toiletries, power packs, bulky things in the medium side, computer and office in the middle, and clothes in the back. So I did want to show one other trick here, um, although for nearly Every time I use this bag, I use the fantastic Absolute shoulder strap. I mean, this bag can get heavy, so the Absolute strap is, is essential in my opinion. Now, whether it's carrying the strap or just the handles, I do occasionally use the backpack straps. Um, they are useful at times. Um, Generally not what I would use, but again, it's a great feature to, to have. And of course they clip in on the outside of the bag here and here. Um, so that's an option. What I really like as well about this section is the shape. It's always kept its square shape versus the Aeronauts, which I'll show you. Aeronaut, as you can see, 
actually has a tapered section in the back. Now this is an older A45, so I'm not sure if the design has changed. But because of its taper, you don't get as much space. Now this is a 13 inch laptop in a vertical cache. It, it just about goes in here. And the Aeronaut 45. But in the TriStar, plenty of room. That extra width is so valuable for rectangular items. And that again is just one of the design features that makes this much more suited to the kind of business, technology, travel. Um, so that's an extra space there for, for perhaps your laptop. It's super secure and safe. Um, this is padded, so you probably could put the laptop straight in there. But to be honest, I think uh, in a cache, that's better. Also, I put it in a vertical one rather than a horizontal with the horizontal opening there. Because then you can still get access to it straight from the top. And what I've seen people do in... Uh, I haven't done it myself yet, but if you load your bag into the overhead with this end, you've got easy access then to the laptop, even if it's in the overhead. Um, if you're security conscious, of course, you could put it the other way around. Uh, but for me, that's a really handy extra feature. As we were saying before, the um, pockets on the front are kind of uh, flexible in my use, depending on where I'm going, what I'm doing. Um, we talked about some things that could be in there. Kindle, for example, on Essential. Um, if you can get the paper white, I'd certainly recommend it. It makes reading so easy wherever you are on a plane in a hotel. That can easily fit in there. Um, I will just show because uh, I think this has been uh, asked before, if I take these bits and pieces out, um, the iPad, this is the 10 and a half inch iPad, uh, can go in there. It's just about the right size. I think if you had a cache around it, you'd, you'd maybe have a tight fit, but again, for me, that works just fine. The iPad fits in that section. The last piece I want to touch on is the water bottle pocket. It's a strange pocket. I know it's a divided opinion on how useful it is. Um, I don't often use it, but I just wanted to show. Um, this is a small, um, I think it's a half litre. I don't know what that is in fluid ounces, sorry. Um, this is a SIG half litre bottle. And as you can see, fits very, very easily into there, uh, even zips up. I know bigger bottles, people tend to leave them open and it still sticks out, that's okay as well. Um, the only thing to watch for is if you've got a big pair of shoes, this gets really bulky here and you probably not want to use the water bottle at the same time. So to recap then, this bag is truly one of the best I've ever owned. Um, I've had it in a number of colors. Um, I had it in the old style with the reversed zips. Um, it's true to its design. It hasn't changed much, if at all, uh, other than the label, which is probably my single disappointment. Um, the change I mentioned about the brain cell clips, which is not an issue for me. Um, gives, I think, a little bit more flexibility in here, perhaps. Um, the backpack straps are, are really useful for those occasions where you might want to use it. The tie-down straps, which the Western Flyer, which this is a little bit bigger than, uh, doesn't have. I think the straps are very, very useful for keeping the load compressed. Um, so that leads me to one of the downsides is you can pack this pretty full 
Um, and when you pack it full, it does have a habit of bulging just a little bit. Um, that's okay. It's just something to be conscious of. And its um, dimension of 2 or 5 millimeters, when you put, pack it full, it expands past that 2 or 5 millimeters. And uh, some airlines' limits are 200. So you just got to be careful that it doesn't get too fat. The second thing is you can add a lot, which means you weighs a lot. You can easily top the 10 um, kilogram limit of some airlines by filling this with a lot of um, electronics, power packs, books, etc. So I would encourage you to, to pack light. Uh, it will make your trip go so much more comfortably uh, and without incident. So this is the Tombin TriStar. As it was known, one bag to rule the skies. I heartily agree with that. I think it's quite possibly the best travel business bag I've owned. And I'm uh, looking forward to many years of travel with it in the future. Thanks for watching.